What do you remember about when Neil first approached you, if anything at all? Uh, well, I remember I was I was um, annoyed <laughs> because uh, he was interrupting. He was interrupting, and yeah, I I I was quite rude to him. I mean, uh, yeah, I was rude. He 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 said to himself, I was rude. Because I, I didn't, I, I was annoyed. He was, he was there. He was interrupting me. He was sort of being a. <laughs> this sounds awful, but he was kind of being a nuisance to me at that point. Because you know, you were in that I, bubble. I was in that bubble, and here he was, like, um, distracting me. So at first, yeah, at first I did. He didn't have the best response from me, but um, you know, after a while, I began to engage with him because I realised that he wasn't. He wasn't going anywhere. He was. He was very much. Um, very grounded, very grounded, um, and he was there to kind of offer, offer help, offer help, and um, I, I finally, and I think actually, you know, with, with Neil, being another young guy, I think that, that was, we often talk about that, because I think that, that made a difference, I reckon. Mm. Um, I was going to ask that actually, like, could it have been anyone, or was, what was it specifically about Neil? That it, it could have, I think it could have been anyone. Yeah. It wasn't just the fact he was a young guy. It could have been anyone. It was, it was not just about the fact he was a young guy. It was more about his actions and his everything, like his, his body language and his, um, yeah, his kind of um, uh, like patience with me and um, the, way he, he, the way he listened so um, attentively and, and, and non-judgmentally. And um, it was just a very different experience to what I had previously like in the hospital um, in the hospital when I said I felt suicidal it was like kind of sort of alarm bells for them and they'd be like right well you know medication and more medication and go back to the suicide ward which is horrible it's just someone comes and sits and watches you 24 7 and doesn't sometimes talk just sits and watches and just this was very different just very different um, it wasn't clinical at all. I think lots of people panic when around the topic of suicide. They want to fix it yeah. or stop you from doing it. it. Seems like what Neil did was he was just a caring voice, just to listen. Yeah, you're right. Actually, yeah, he didn't. It wasn't like you're right. I've not thought about that, but yeah, he wasn't like you know, no, you're doing the wrong thing, or or um, you shouldn't be doing this. He was just very much like um, he was just held the space. Do you know yeah. what I mean? He held the space for me. He held which which hadn't been done before. He held the space and and he just Neil um, yeah he just got this uh, ability to um, I see it particularly when we go to schools the way like when young people come and talk to him and he just he's able to hold this space and he has he, he I don't know he has something about him where people feel they can yeah to talk to him and, and and open up and he listens he really he's a, he's a really good listener I think I think that is. Um, that was really key to it was was the listening as well as obviously what he said but it was the listening and and, and him um, not being affected by what yeah. I was saying he was just you know it didn't matter what I said he was just he was grounded he was he was he, he listened so attentively um, yeah and it was very powerful it was very powerful.